I'm Dr. Larry Sterna. In this video, I'm going to discuss the electric force. I'm going to discuss some rules. I'll give the equation for the electric force. And in future videos, we'll do some calculations. Let's consider two charges, Q1 and Q2, separated by a distance r. Now, we might tend to think in terms of a question like, what is the force between the two charges? Actually, each charge exerts a force on the other charge. Therefore, if you have two charges, you will have not one force, but two forces. Now, you look at the picture, those black arrows indicate the two forces. Two charges that have the same sign, similar charges, either two positive or two negative, will repel each other. Therefore, in the picture you see two arrows. Q1 is being repelled in one direction, Q2 in the opposite direction. If we had two unlike charges, a positive and a negative for Q1 and Q2, Again, we have two forces. Each charge exerts a force on the other charge, an attractive force. So the positive charge experiences a force in one direction, the negative a force in the opposite direction. Now, these two forces always occur in equal and opposite pairs. Equal meaning both forces have the same magnitude. Even if one charge is much larger than the other one, they will both experience the same magnitude of the force. They're opposite, meaning they point in opposite direction. Force is a vector. What is the direction of the vector? Well, the forces are always directed along the line separating the charges. In the two pictures, the dashed line is the line separating the two charges. For the two positive charges, the forces point away from one another, but they're along that line between the two charges. For the positive and negative, the two forces point toward one another. Again, they're along that line that separates the two charges. What if you have more than two charges? Well, if you have more than two, you treat each pair one at a time. And after you get through all the pairs, you sum up all the forces from all the pairs to determine the net force on any given charge. This equation is called Coulomb's Law of Electric Force. Capital F stands for force, the subscript E for electric. The electric force is equal to K sub E, that's a constant, times Q1 times Q2 divided by R squared. The constant K sub E, also called Coulomb's constant, is shown there below. 8.99 times 10 to the 9. Q1 and Q2, those two charges, each one should be given in coulombs. The distance between the two charges, R, should be given in meters. You plug in those units, the charge squared divided by meter squared times the constant. The result will be in newtons. However, you only obtain a number from calculating this equation. What is that number? Well, that number may be positive, it may be negative. If you take the absolute value, that is you just take the positive value of the number, that gives you the magnitude of the force. The problem is, for a vector problem, you need to know both the magnitude of the vector and the direction of the vector. 
This only gives you the magnitude. Obtaining the vector components, the direction, that's another problem altogether. We'll treat that in a later video. Before we continue with some examples of calculating the electric force, I want to compare Newton's law of gravity with Coulomb's law of electric force. The two formulas look very similar. For the gravitational force, F sub G, is equal to a constant, capital G. You have two masses, M1, M2, divided by the separation R squared. Coulomb's law, you have a constant, K sub E, Q1, Q2, divided by the separation R squared. Very similar. Gravitational law, proportional to each mass. Coulomb's law, proportional to each charge. And they're both divided by the separation between the two objects, R squared. But what about the two constants? The gravitational constant is extremely small. 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. Therefore, to have a significant gravitational force, you must have some very large mass involved, such as the Earth or the Moon or the Sun. For Coulomb's law, the constant is much larger. 8.99 times 10 to the 9. Therefore, the charges can be very small. Things like an electron or a proton or an ion. Consequently, the gravitational force can keep the moon in orbit around the Earth, but you need the electrical force to maintain the structure of the atom and keep the electrons near the nucleus. In this video, I introduced the electric force. I showed you the equation for Coulomb's law of electric force, and I went over the rules for determining the two force vectors that are created when you have two interacting charges. In the next video, I'll work some examples showing you how to calculate the magnitude of the electric force. See you there.